Hey guys, let's replace the roof on this camper. This is actually the roof of my parents' camper, and so my dad's gonna be helping me with this project. 100% recommend having more than one person do this because it's very labor intensive and it will take you a long time if you do it by yourself. This roof membrane is about 20 years old. Um, as you can see, there's lots of flaking, lots of black spots on it. That's a dead giveaway that a roof needs to be replaced if you see black spots on it. Um, so it was definitely time for this roof to go and for all of the new vents to come on as well. So there's lots of ways to replace a roof, um, but the first step that I do is typically take off all of the vents um, and any pretty much anything that's held on by screws on top of the roof needs to come off. That includes antennas, AC units, um, all of that stuff needs to come off. When I'm replacing a roof, I typically don't save any of the vents. They're all gonna be replaced, which makes life so much easier. Um, and I don't remove all of the sealant because there's really no reason to when you're just taking the entire thing off anyway. Um, but for this uh, skylight right here that goes down to the bathroom, it's plastic. And so the sealant kind of just peels up on it, which is what you see me doing right here. And the best thing that I have found to either scrape away enough sealant so you can find the screw or the bolt um, or whether you need to just scrape away the sealant like this, kind of pry it up so you can reveal the screws underneath. Um, this is actually a really cheap scraper set that I bought from Harbor Freight. Um, there's, it's like a four piece for like 550. There's the best thing ever. And then I just resharpen them as they get dull. And you can see right here, that screw right there was rusting and it was leaking through the sealant. Um, so uh, any longer and that would have just wreaked havoc on this roof as well. Now the most common screw that you're gonna run into um, probably most likely be a square head, um, but you also could run into a Phillips head or you could run into a screw that has like a quarter inch drive on the head, which is what I am um, taking off right here. It honestly just depends on the manufacturer and it also depends on if you have metal or if you have aluminum um, supports in your roof, they'll just use different types of screws. Now something else that you're going to notice me doing is getting a razor blade and just cutting around the roof membrane and pulling the entire vent up. Um, this is the best way ever to do this because again, you're not saving any of this. It's so dry rotted. You see there, it just comes right off. It just cracks up. Um, so it just makes a lot less mess and it's just a lot less work when you try to do it like that. Um, so that's just the way I do it and it's just super easy and I can just take the entire vent and put it in the trash bag. Now, while you watch me and Perry the Platypus here, AKA my dad, um, go ahead and take this one off. I do wanna note a few things about the supplies that I use. So most of the supplies that I buy, I buy through Rec Pro. Um, that includes pretty much all of the vents, the screws, the trim cover, um, the skin itself, which comes in a kit with the glue and the butyl tape and the self-leveling sealant. Um, I do buy extra self-leveling sealant when I do this because the kit only comes with four tubes and I usually need more than that. Um, so kind of keep that in the back of your brain. I usually end up buying um, eight total. If you do end up buying from Rec Pro, um, I do have a 5% off discount code that you can use. Um, and I get, I think maybe 3.5% of that as a commission. So if you'd like to use that, that'd be great. Um, if not, that's totally fine too. They also do sell most of this stuff on Amazon as well. It's just usually a little more expensive on Amazon. So I typically just order directly from them. Okay, something I probably should have included at the beginning of this, but I did not, is definitely make sure that your power is off to the camper um, because the vent that I just took off, I had to disconnect the power to that. My dad actually already did all of that before I went ahead and started taking all these off. Um, and this antenna, he actually forgot to unhook the um, part from the ceiling on the interior. So as you can see, I kind of just scraped around with the... Um, razor blade right there and lifted it up just like that. But I can't bring it out all the way yet because it's got a part on the inside of the camper that's gotta be unhooked first. And as far as unhooking the electrical for the vents, um, there's pretty much just going to be a black wire and a white wire. It may also be a red wire and a white wire, but that's pretty, that's not really typical. It's typically a black and a white and you'll just take the wire nuts off of that and then cap the original lines, not the lines that go to um, the vent because obviously those will be inactive if you take the power off of it. And if you wanna learn about how to take an AC unit off, um, I do have another video on how to install an AC unit. So pretty much just do that, but do it backwards. Um, standard is going to be basically 
the cover comes off and then there's four uh, really long bolts and then you probably have some type of disconnect um, and then maybe something in the coils that you'll have to take off as well. Um, but again, I would go back and watch one of the other videos that I have on how to take the ACE unit off if you don't really know how to do that. Also, it's a good idea to check the coils on your AC unit because when you have it off, it's a really good time to go ahead and clean the coils while the roof is already dirty and gross. Um, so definitely check the coils and see if they need to be cleaned. If you haven't done it in a while, that's a good time to do it. Um, because one, you can either take them off if you have scaffolding or some type of something um, to get the AC unit off the roof. But most of the time, I just leave it up there and kind of scooch it around on some foam. Um, because one, it's super high up here. And two, I don't have a box big enough to put the AC unit in to slide it down. Um, the only way I've successfully got it down is when I've had either a giant box or I've had scaffolding and another person to help me. Okay, got almost all of this off. Um, most of these vents are already off. There is a ladder up here because it's a fifth wheel, so that's also going to have to come off. Again, just kind of peel the sealant back to where there's a screw. Um, if you look hard enough, typically you'll be able to tell where the screw is, um, and that's really the only place that you need to start scraping to get that screw up, because like I said, you're not gonna be saving any of this unless for some reason you just replaced all the vents like not too long ago and you still wanna save them. I also do have all of these linked in my Amazon storefront if you wanted to check it out to see what Amazon have um, or has because I, like I said, most of this I order from Rec Pro, but some of it I don't because Rec Pro doesn't sell some of it. Um, so definitely check that out. All right, so the back strip and the front strip will also need to come off. Um, same thing I'm doing right here, just scraping the sealant off to where that screw is, and then um, I'm kind of just peeling it back. I did cut this because there was sealant on it, and I didn't want to have to fight it and mess with it. So I got a razor blade and cut it kind of above, or I guess directly behind where that strip is, and then it comes off. Um, same thing is going to be with these side rails on both sides. You're going to want to take it off. Um, but before I can do that, there's actually trim screw cover in here that needs to come off first. Um, and this was a pain in the butt to kind of get off because it was so dry rotted that it just came off in like little itty bitty sections. I mean, it literally just crumbled whenever I tried to do it. Um, so take the screw trim cover off. You will need to replace that once you put these back on. So make sure you buy that as well. Um, definitely easier to do this when it's warmer outside because, um, it's just the, the plastic, they're it's basically a plastic piece and it doesn't bend very well when it's cold outside. Um, but when it's warm and it's nice and flexible, it's a, it's a breeze to reinstall that strip. Anyway, so go ahead and take that off. This is, I believe, one inch, which is pretty standard for pretty much all RVs. Um, it's going to be the one inch size. All right, so now that we've got the back and I think I took the front off already, I can't tell. If not, we'll get to it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start taking these sections off. So there's actually three sections on this because it is a fifth wheel and it is very long. This is like a 41 or 40 foot camp or something like that. So it's pretty long. They don't typically put these in all one piece. Um, so pretty much you're just gonna take the screws out and then I kind of pry it down a little bit and wiggle it until it comes out. There is butyl tape on the other side, so just be careful. Um, and then I throw it on the ground in order that they go in, so I don't actually mess up the order of these. Um, something to note about these side rails, do not bend them because they are expensive to replace and you don't want to have to buy new ones in case you bent it. That first section was really small, but these other two sections are fairly large. Um, so you're just gonna wanna be careful about loosening the left side and the right side kind of evenly. Um, I mean, obviously it's aluminum. You're not gonna mess it up too much, but if you sit there and you pull it, it will bend the entire thing. Um, so don't sit there and just kind of force it because if you just get a scraper and kind of stick it in like I'm doing, piece by piece, it will eventually kind of come out and then you can put it on the ground in the correct order. Now, while I'm doing this last piece right here, I will say the thing I like about doing fifth wheels versus travel trailers is you don't have to take the awning off um, because if you have a travel trailer, you'll notice that the top rail right there and the rail that the awning slides in are the same rail. So you have to take the awning off before you can actually replace the roof. Um, so keep that in the back of your brain as well. Um, awnings are not hard to take off. It's really just one more step in the process. Um, so 
Yeah. And that's also one of those things that if you're going to take the awning off, you might as well replace the fabric on the awning. Um, so just stick that in the back of your brain too, because that's typically one of those, well, I'm already this far in type of thing. And it's better to just replace it now so you don't have to take the awning off again. All right, so after you've got all of the vents, the AC, all of the side rails, the front and the back rails off, you can go ahead and start peeling um, that roof membrane back. Um, so what I'm doing at the front right there, I was pretty much just finishing taking up that front rail. Um, and then the cap for this fifth wheel is actually um, screwed down to the actual roof itself. So I needed to take those screws out and then I was ready to go ahead and start ripping it up. Now don't let these next few minutes of fast forwarded video um, deceive you. This is extremely labor intensive. This is the most labor intensive part, I think, of the whole thing. It does go by pretty quick if you have two people, um, but just keep this in the back of your brain. If it's OSB, you're fine to just cut it section by section, which is what I'm doing here. You see, I'm not trying to peel it up as one entire roof skin. Um, I'm cutting it with a razor blade and taking it out in sections because it's so much easier to do it like that. Now, if it's OSB, that's totally fine to do. Um, if it is, if you have like an ultralight camper, um, just be careful with this because if it's most of the time, it's like quarter inch plywood and the direction that you tear it does matter because it can actually take up the actual roof with it. Um, so you tear with the grain of the wood, if that makes any sense at all. I think the ultralights are ultra ridiculous because of how they manufacture them and what the roof is made out of. It's pretty much just foam and quarter inch plywood or not even that. Sometimes it's eighth inch smushed together. Um, so you just got to be really careful about the direction that you pull it because if you pull it in the direction that's not going with the grain of the wood or how it's kind of manufactured, then you risk kind of tearing a layer of that wood off with the roof skin itself. Anyway, but this is OSB, so I don't have to worry about that. So we're just going piece by piece here. This probably took us, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes with both of us just sitting here and ripping this up. And if you notice, I kind of rip it up into a ball and put it in the trash bag as I'm working. Um, this roof will still be sticky because obviously it has glue on it. Um, you're not going to worry about scraping any of that off. It's not going to be globbed up glue. It's pretty much just going to be sticky on your feet. Now, because it is sticky and it is kind of tacky, anything that goes on that will stick to it, aka dust or screws or staples. And so that's why we're being careful right here not to just rip it all up without any thought in the world of anything else and making a mess um, because I have a lot of screws that I kind of just tossed on top of the roof from when I was taking the vents out and I don't want all of that mess to get on the roof. So I'm trying to contain the mess as much as possible. That way it's less cleaning and less work that I have to do later. So just inch by inch, kind of moving it along. You see, I moved the AC units down a little more um, and that's totally fine to do. Just be careful and make sure you're not pinching any of the wires that are underneath it. Um, and this is also a really good time if you have like older AC units. I know my dad's already done this so that we didn't do it. Um, it's a good time to replace the gaskets on your AC units. You can buy them off Amazon for like 20 bucks. Pretty much just scrape the old gasket off, clean it really well with alcohol, and then you can apply a new gasket. Um, definitely recommend that if you haven't done it in the last, I don't know, five years maybe because the foam on them does get wore out and then that's just one more place that you could have a leak. I do have that linked on my Amazon storefront as well if you'd like to check it out. Um, so if you remember me mentioning earlier, he had some water damage to the back. If you can see the two, both back corners right there had some water damage. And unfortunately, my camera died. And so I didn't get a cool video of me ripping this entire piece up. Um, but I did repair this. I'm taking the screws out right here. There's a, like two or three screws on each side. Took the entire panel out and replaced that entire panel because it was just a four by eight sheet. I think it was seven sixteenths is what it was. So just sometimes it's easier to just take the whole sheet out and replace the entire sheet than it is to try to do some patchwork. And I always recommend just taking the whole sheet out. You got a spot, take the whole sheet out, put a new sheet in. That way you don't have to build anything else or do anything else. It will save you so much time if you just take the whole sheet out. My dad also didn't want that skylight that was right there in the middle of his fifth wheel. So I went ahead and filled that in. 
Um, I just made some framing for that and screwed it in pretty much. Um, and then retaped all of the edges, um, taped the seams, uh, taped the edges, and tape anywhere where a vent is. You're going to want to tape those edges as well. So I went ahead and laid that roof skin out. Um, I laid it out all the way just so I know that it's going to fit on either side and have overhang on the left and the right side. Now I'm gonna go ahead and mix the glue. Um, this is actually my egg beater from inside and I don't use it because I use my stand mixer. So I brought it outside and that's what I use it for is mixing things. All right, so this is actually the next day. I let it sit overnight um, and now I'm rolling it back up. This is just the way that I prefer to do it. Now you can do it any way you wanna do it, but this is the way that I have found is easiest. Um, so I just have a regular paint roller right here and I'm rolling the glue out. Um, and then I have a, this is a, a pool noodle with a piece of wood in the middle and I use that to smooth out any air bubbles or any gaps or anything else like that. Um, this works really, really well to smooth things out. Um, and then, you know, ideally when you do this, it's going to be 75, 80 degrees. It was a little bit cooler um, because I did this at the end of December here in North Carolina. So not an ideal temperature to do it because I like for the glue to be at least a little bit tacky when I put the roof membrane down. Kind of helps with the air bubbles and stuff like that. But this is what we were working with right now. So this is what I did. The only drawback to it being this cooler, it's not even that the glue won't dry because it's still like 60, 65 degrees outside. Um, it's that when I go back to walk on it, the glue won't dry as quickly and it can leave like indentations in it. And so it's just not preferable to me. You can still do it. Um, you just have to be careful about smoothing out any spots that you've walked in. So as you can see, I'm kind of just working my way um, all the way towards the front of the camper. You can start with the back if you want to, doesn't really matter, um, whichever you prefer. And then I'm moving the AC unit around. Be careful not to scratch the roof membrane that you've just put down um, and just kind of move it around until you get it to a place where it's out of the way. So now I can roll this other half up to where I started to begin with and work my way toward the back of the camper. Now, I honestly think that this kit um, comes with way too much glue. I have never used the entire thing of glue before. Um, I probably only used like half of the container of glue for this. And if you just glob it on there, it just doesn't, it, it just, it doesn't sit well. And then there's a lot of air bubbles and I don't know. So you do what you feel like is best, but this is how I've always done it. And I've never had a problem with air bubbles or it coming up or anything else like that. Um, I just don't like to glob it on. It seems completely unnecessary to me. So I'm almost toward the back of the camper and for the last little bit I kind of just switched places there and went on the other side. Um, again when you do this just be careful about making spots where your knees or your feet are and then I'll trim the corners right there around the molding that's coming up from the sides um, so it'll kind of drop down and sit nice and flat and then I'm just going to go around and pretty much smooth out any extra air bubbles or anything else like that. And then there's my husband riding by to say hi in the Jeep. <laughs> All right, so once you're happy with how the bubbles look, you can go ahead and start putting your trim pieces back on. Um, now you notice I am not tucking this underneath the front cap like it was originally on before. Originally it was under the front cap with the trim piece on top. Um, and I haven't really started doing this until recently when I saw another RV technician um, do this. And it's because if you ever get a leak right here, um, instead of running uh, from the roof membrane underneath the front cap, it's pretty much just going to run over the front cap instead, which I thought was just absolutely great. And I don't know why they haven't done that before, but this is how I'm going to do it every single time now. Something else to note about putting these trim pieces back, um, when you put them back on, um, make sure to get them in the exact holes that they were originally in. Um, it just makes things line up so much easier this way because you won't have to worry about, oh, am I off? Oh, am I to the left? Am I to the right? Just get them back in the same holes and your life will be so much easier. Um, I speak from personal experience. After that front piece is on, I can go ahead and trim the excess off. This is just a razor blade. I'm just kind of gliding it along. Now you can either start with the vents or you can start with the side pieces. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do these vents. 
Uh, and that's just because I don't feel like bending over. So this is where I'm at. Now to cut these in place, you see I just basically made an X and then cut off the excess. Um, and then I have some staples. I'm gonna go ahead and staple the extra skin to the side of the framing that's on the interior of the camper. And see, I'm kind of just pulling it tight right here, um, cutting off any excess that I need, dropping it down in the camper. Um, I like to leave a mess for my mom to clean up, keeps her on her toes. So that's why I dropped it down there instead of putting it in my yard. And these staples, I think they're just like quarter inch staples, nothing crazy, nothing too deep. Um, it just kind of tacks it in and keeps it from folding up. Um, now that piece that's close to the edge right there, just make sure that if you don't put the side rails on first, that you're not pulling it too tight because you don't want to make like a wrinkle in the skin if you do that. Um, so just keep that in the back of your brain, whichever, whichever one you decide to do first. I also want you to note that from the time I brought the roof skin up um, to uh, pretty much when I'm going to be done, I'm not going to be wearing shoes on this roof. Now that is a personal preference and it's because I don't like messing up the nice white of the roof that I just put on. And so I have a no shoes rule up here and anybody that comes down, comes up on the roof is not allowed to wear shoes as well because it just looks so nice and pretty and why would I want to mess it up with dirty shoes? Um, plus, I can kind of walk around and smooth out any air bubbles with my toes. So there's that too. All right, so same thing right here. Um, but what you see me tacking in right here, some of the old uh, staples that were kind of just sticking out from where I took the other vent off. Um, and if you see my dad right there in the corner, while I am... Uh, putting these vents back on, he's actually cleaning off all of those side pieces and the back piece um, because there's a lot of like old nasty butyl tape on it and that needs to be cleaned off and new butyl tape needs to be applied to that before you can put it back on. So that's the main reason why I haven't put the side rails back on is because we're kind of double teaming it. He's sitting in his chair cleaning and I'm up on the roof putting all the vents in and just kind of working as a team to get this thing done. And this is absolutely crazy to me because we got this roof done in uh, pretty much two full days. Um, he came and parked this at my house and we knocked it out pretty quickly, which is insane because normally I do this by myself and it takes me a very long time to do this. All right, so this is the new skylight dome. I'm putting some new butyl tape on it. Um, this did come from Rec Pro, so you can buy it with the interior and the exterior, which is what my dad did. Um, so it comes with the exterior dome right here, and then another piece that kind of goes up in, like inside the shower from the interior of the camper. Now, something important to note about this as well is you do not want to tighten these screws too much. You need to remember that this is plastic, and so it's more pliable than say like aluminum. And so when you put these screws in, if they're too tight, it's actually going to sink in and it will over time crack the plastic surround. Um, and that's what you don't want to do. I have repaired so many campers where it started leaking from this skylight dome right here. Um, simply because whoever installed the vent over tightened the screws. Even if you put sealant on it, that crack will work its way all the way up. I also found myself a cute little friend over here. I don't know if you can really see it, but it's like a honeybee. And I think it was actually dying. It's like the third time it flew up on the roof. And so I decided to like take it on my finger and just give it a little ride before I shoot it away. All right, so my dad has the first set of rails on, so I'm gonna go ahead and start working on those. The first one is always the hardest. I'm just gonna go ahead and warn you to that because trying to get it in the right hole on the left and the right side is, yeah, blech, that's how it is, blech. Now the problem that I ran into with this camper was that the butyl tape kept sticking really bad to the roof membrane when I was trying to line up the holes that it was in originally. Um, so a way that my dad suggested that actually worked out really good was um, when you put the butyl tape on, I left the backing on the butyl tape and then I put 
one screw in on the left side of the rail and then another screw into the right side of the rail. And that way I kind of had a guide on where it was supposed to go. Um, for the longer ones, I did one in the middle too, just so I knew where it was supposed to go. And then kind of backed those screws out a little bit and then slowly peeled the butyl tape off as it was already up there in place. Um, and that actually worked out really good to keep the roof membrane in the place where it was supposed to be and keep the rail on the place where it was supposed to be. I also did not include this part for some reason, but um, I stapled the roof membrane to the actual side of the camper. Now where that staple is gonna go is gonna depend on how high or low that rail is. Um, because what you don't wanna do is put it too high and then your rail won't cover the staple. Um, you don't wanna have like an exposed staple spot on the side of your camper because that's just a league waiting to happen. And the purpose of the staple is just to keep the roof membrane tight um, coming from that 90 degree angle um, over and down. And so if you keep it tight, you're more or I guess less likely to have any bubbling on the corner of the camper. Um, so just keep that in the back of your brain. I know there's a couple different ways to do that, but that just worked really well for this fifth wheel. So pretty much just gonna keep going and keep doing the same thing. Um, there is lots of screws in here. So just go ahead and emotionally prepare yourself to be up here while doing this. Um, definitely is helpful with two people up here, especially with these really long um, roof rails right here. Now on the other side, I ran into the problem where a lot of the screws were so rusted out that I had to get some channel locks and pretty much just hand loosen them, which was super tedious and very irritating. But those screws really do need to come out because if you try to pull it, you'll make like, um, it's, I mean, it's a, they're aluminum, so you're going to mess up the rail and then you'll have to flatten it back out which is fine if it's like one spot, but you definitely don't want it for like more than one. Um, so just keep that in your mind as you're going through this because more than likely you'll come across some that are pretty rusted and you won't be able to unscrew the head on it. All right, so as you watch me and my dad kind of finish this last section right here, um, one other thing to note about these rails, there are all these things called gutter spouts. Highly recommend getting those if yours are um, broken off, which most of them are on older campers like this. Uh, they pretty much just go on the all four corners of the camper when you put these rails back on and it diverts the water away from the camper. Um, so that is huge and definitely something you want to spend the extra 10 bucks on and buy because it's going to save you from direct water exposure on your camper as the water is trying to get off your roof and down to the ground. So now that that rail's on, I can go ahead and trim the rest of this roof skin off. This is just a razor blade that I'm using, a box knife, and kind of going underneath that rail and just running it along the underneath edge um, little by little, making sure I'm not going in obviously too deep, um, but you do want to get the majority of that excess off. Now I know I didn't talk about what type of roof this is, um, but this is a PVC membrane roof and this is what I install on every camper roof that I do. And I like it because it has a 10 year warranty um, and you can actually patch it if you save some of that roof skin. You can actually patch this with like PVC glue um, and glue a patch on it versus having to put that um, tape or whatever it is that covers the other roof on it. It's just, it's more durable. It has a 10 year warranty, lasts a really long time. You never have to reseal it um, and you can patch it, which is great. So that's a win-win for me. All right, so we're finally on to the caulking stage. Um, so I do put sealant all along the side rails, the front, the back, and all of the vents. Now this sealant is self-leveling. It's called self-leveling sealant, specifically made for RVs. Do not try to use anything else on your roof. I don't care what you say. I don't care what your friend said or what they recommended. Do not use anything else on an RV roof. Do not use silicon. Do not use adhesive. Do not use whatever it is that's in your brain. Use a self-leveling sealant because that is the only thing that will stay attached to your roof membrane and attached to any type of material that could be on your roof. 
So you're pretty much going to run it all along the edges, make a little loop there where your screws are, um, and cover the screws and all of the edges. Now this does expand when it comes out. Um, so you see it doesn't look like I'm putting a whole lot here, but the um, sky vent, especially with it being plastic, once it sits in the sun, those edges are gonna kind of poof up a little bit. And so I originally coat it right here. And then in about a week when it sat there in the sun and it's kind of expanded a little bit, I come back and I redo this one specific vent. Now this is the only one that I do this for. I don't do it for the ones that are aluminum because they don't expand like the plastic one does. And this one, this one is plastic too. This is for the fridge. You can come back and check this one, but the screw holes on this one are so close together that I've never had an issue with this popping up like I have the skylight for the shower. Also, my dad found these metal plumbing vents and I really like that a whole lot better than the plastic ones. So I think I'm gonna start using those from now on. Um, and the cost is like not much different. So 100% like that upgrade that he has for this one. Anyway, pretty much now it's just a matter of reassembling all the vents, putting your AC units back on, um, and then you're going to put the trim screw cover in on the side rails. And if it's on the front or the back, you're gonna wanna do that too. Um, I hope this has been helpful. And if you guys have any questions or I missed something, drop a comment and I will do my best to get back to you. Y'all have a great afternoon.